Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. And for this video, I'm going to be speaking on somebody that went to the most extreme measures just to fit in while incarcerated. Robert Hodister, born in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and like many struggling with life at an early age, he found himself in the great gunshine state of Florida. His first arrest dates back to October of 2009 at just 18 years old, and he had a list of charges. Driving with a restricted license, having an open container of alcohol in the vehicle, possession of alcohol by a person under 21, failure to appear in court, grant that auto, dealing in stolen property, the list goes on. But it isn't his arrest record that captivated everyone's attention. It was his progression in life. It seemed each arrest leveled up his convict superpowers, giving him more face tattoos, or at least the inspiration to get more face tattoos. Starting off with the Mi Vida Loca Dots, which stands for My Crazy Life, to a teardrop, which used to mean you killed somebody in the past, but for him, it probably meant he killed any future job opportunities. And if you've ever been locked up in Florida, you know like I know, being white isn't the easiest. And for Robert, most likely being targeted for the color of his skin, he thought the best way to fit in locked up would be to tattoo SS bolts between his eyes, nicknamed Cracker Bolts in Florida. Now, unlike California, in Florida, you don't, I repeat, you don't have to put in work to achieve this level of savagery. You don't have to stab any ops on a foyer or burn any crosses in somebody's front lawn. You can just stick cracker bolts on your face and you're rocking with Hitler like Hitler's rocking with you. And in 2010, Robert was sentenced to a year and nine months in the Florida Department of Corrections for two counts of Grand Theft Auto. In 2012, Robert had a warrant out for his arrest after police found probable cause that he committed forgery for attempting to cash a check at a Wells Fargo in Jupiter, Florida. He handed the teller his Florida driver's permit and a TD bank card both in his name with a check worth $180. At first, he attempted to cash it for his girlfriend, but the teller found the girlfriend's account was closed and noted for fraudulent activity. He then said he was paid by his boss for a small labor job in which the teller became suspicious calling the victim of the stolen check to confirm the story. The victim advised he didn't write any check to anybody, and the teller notified Robert she was calling the police. Robert and his girlfriend left the Wells Fargo, leaving behind his ID and the check. Through further investigation with the police department, it was found he had cashed three previous checks, all for the amount of $275. And in 2013, he found himself back in prison with a 36-month sentence for forgery charges and dealing in stolen property. Now, for some reason, he decided to cover up the SS bolts. I'm guessing Hitler wasn't rocking with him or whatever it was. Maybe he realized it wasn't the best way to fit in with the other races in jail. Either way, it looks like he slipped and fell on a tattoo gun and woke up with a black blob covering the majority of his forehead. He didn't stop though. He kept headbutting tattoo guns in prison and further fucking his face up with a whole layer of stupidity, adding teardrops for every time he killed his self esteem. But on June 24th, 2018, he really turned his savage up. While inside of the Okeechobee County Jail, an inmate named Timothy Brown was talking crazy, threatening another inmate. Robert told investigators after the fact that he felt threatened because of how close him and Timothy slept. So he popped off, striking Timothy multiple times in the face, not stopping even when Timothy tried to get back to his bunk. Robert is currently in the Florida Department of Corrections. On three Grand Theft Autos, one burglary of a structure, and battery on a detainee. He has a release date of January 16th, 2021. Looking at his Florida DOC page, his prison aliases 
are face, six, and 88. The eight standing for the eighth letter in the alphabet being H, and two H's meaning Hail Hitler. So maybe Hitler's still rocking with him, or maybe the alias stuck from his first prison bid. Now, I don't make these videos to bash people or put people down because we all make mistakes. But from hearing dude's story and seeing his pictures, he looks like a first degree dumbass, to be honest with you. That's my honest opinion. And I base that opinion on a few different things. It isn't like you've done an insane amount of time under forced politics where, you know, out west, California, Arizona, wherever, when you go into prison, you're forced to rock with your race. That, that isn't what happened to you. You know what I mean? And you didn't even have that much time. You know, if you include his county time, I'm sure he was getting time served off of these little ass bids. He's only going up the road for a couple of months. And I broke it down in a previous video, the type of people that tattoo their whole entire face. They're either stone cold killers or they're trying to put on an image and they hide behind this image. They want people to fear the image more than the actual person. You know, there's a difference between fearing someone for their image and fearing someone for their actions. Someone that you heard is actually rocking like that versus somebody that looks like they might be crazy and come to find out they really aren't. And fitting in inside of jail and prison, it's one of the main reasons people join gangs, join cliques, join religions. It's not just whites that go in and want to become skinheads, hail Hitler and all that. You got blacks that go in and become Muslims. And you got plenty of people that get out of jail and prison and forget about all that shit. The second they get out, they're covering up the tattoos, they're putting the kufi away. Whatever it is, they act like it never happened until they run into somebody that remembers them. Like, oh, wasn't you da-da-da? No, bro, that wasn't me, bro. <laughs> but what I don't understand for him, like I don't understand for many others, I chose to stay with who I was rocking with on the street. I already had an affiliation. So my affiliation inside of prison to me was already solidified. I don't understand why there's a common theme for whites that go to jail or to prison to automatically take on racist beliefs. It's one thing if you want to get into Odinism, it is what it is. If you want to get into paganism, cool. But when you start adapting swastikas and cracker bolts and all this shit, I always hear the same thing. I'm not racist. It's pride. How? When the majority of Europe and white countries went against Hitler, how was the symbolisms that he used and stole from other cultures, how was that white pride? Because people, oh, I'm not racist, bro. You know, a swastika is really Hindu. Well, what the fuck does that have to do with you? Are you a Nazi Hindu now? I don't understand because you weren't this shit before you went in. Your father was a fucking Catholic or a fucking Jew. You haven't even done your ancestry. You don't know what you are. I met a kid inside a prison with a swastika and he was Jewish. He was born Jewish. His parents are Jewish. This shit doesn't make any sense to me. So I don't understand how the whole white pride thing gets thrown in there. And then as far as him covering up his tattoos, I mean, it's common because a lot of people want to fit in and a lot of people grow out of what they wanted to fit into. That's what's important about this story. He cemented his face. He made it permanent. There's nothing that he can change about his face. He can't change these tattoos. He can't laser it off. He's going to end up looking like he survived a nuclear holocaust if he does try to laser all that shit off. His face is going to be melted, right? Decisions that you make in life can have an everlasting effect on your life. And some of these decisions are only based on temporary things that you're going through. Whether it's a year in jail, three years in prison, whatever it is, it's temporary. It isn't permanent. That is why it is so important at a young age to think through every single decision and to not base decisions based upon the decisions of others. Impressions. You do not need to go and look at this guy have a false idol, somebody that's going to lead you down the wrong path. You praise him. You want to follow his direction. The realest big homies I ever met in my life told me not to gangbang. Told me when I go home, forget about this shit. 
Don't even bother with this shit, bro. You want to write, that's cool. But don't go out there just to bring yourself back in here. The realest big homies I ever met told me not to hurt people, not to stab people, not to engage in violence, further my education, find a way to make money. Because the realest, toughest, strongest, most savage motherfucker in prison isn't shit in society. And I remember telling Goo at Appalachia CI, I would rather be a nobody on the street than a somebody inside a prison. And he said, that's real, bro. Because being somebody in here doesn't mean anything at all. Now with Robert, obviously he's coming home. He doesn't have a life sentence. He doesn't have massive amounts of time. But as far as him getting a job, it's going to be difficult. It's possible, but it's difficult. And when you set up these barriers in your own life, right? A lot of people like throwing out white privilege. And at the same time, a lot of people will say, I don't have white privilege. I'm a felon. I have tattoos on my face. Well, you put those tattoos on your face and you did something to become a felon. So that doesn't really work in a sense. Those are barriers that you put up for yourself. That doesn't compare to a barrier somebody has based on their skin color from when they were born. That's an automatic disadvantage versus you added on some disadvantages, right? I can't blame anybody for my felonies, for my tattoos, anything like that. All I can do is find the right mentality to overcome any of the problems that I have in my life. If I can't work here, I find another job. If I can't get that job, well, fuck a job. I'm going to create a job. I'm going to find my own way of bringing in revenue, maintaining a positive and healthy life, not letting any false idols have an impression on me that's going to lead me down a wrong path. When you see this dude's face, imagine it being yours and how you would feel. Would you feel like a killer with all that shit on your face? Would you feel like a savage, like you completed something in life by putting all that there? Or would you feel regret? Would you wish that you didn't do that? Would you wish that you could take it back? Because if you're living life with regret, that's not how you want to be living. And to make sure you never live that life, you got to think everything through. But hey, it's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with Charlie. Y'all rocking with me. Till next time.